From peak to creek, it's race time. Can your legs handle it? The Whistler Pottery Club gets set to host an empty bowls fundraiser and you get to take home the bowl. Then we'll help you fill it with a delicious soup with a Thai twist. Stick around, that's all on this episode of Go See the Sky. Welcome to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, on top of beautiful Whistler Mountain, where the 30th annual Peak to Valley race is about to get underway. Now, it's the only race of its kind in the world. It has a vertical drop of more than 1,300 meters. It's five kilometers long and has more than 180 gates. It's a big event here at Whistler Blackcomb, and this is just a glimpse of what it's all about. With one strong push out of the gate, the race is on. Skis pointed downhill, stay strong. It'll be a long way before you cross the finish line. When you get to the bottom, if you're still standing, well, you know you're alive and well. Owen Owens is not your average racer, and this is not your average race. He's 88 years old and still competing in what marks the 30th annual Peak to Valley race on Whistler Mountain. I love all the people that are doing it and uh, the challenge of it and uh, to see whether the legs and the joints and all those things will work for the seven or eight minutes it takes me to get down there. Yes, you heard him. Some racers take eight minutes or even longer to reach the valley bottom. Impressive, well, more competitive skiers do it in less than six minutes. No matter your age, ability or speed, everyone skis the same course, all five and a half kilometers of it. Sure, my legs are burning. And, uh, you wonder why about three quarters of the way down I'm doing this, but you say it's fun. The course starts at the peak of Whistler Mountain. Racers carve their way down the saddle, tuck across the flats and carry their speed towards the Dave Murray downhill, finishing at Creekside Base. With a vertical drop of more than 1,300 meters, it's the only race of its kind in the world. It's got 160 gates in it, which are GS turns. And if you think about your normal World Cup GS course, they have about 35, 38 gates in it. So it's really long. Racers compete as part of a team of four. Their times are added for a group result and then scored against others in one of six age categories. It's all about camaraderie. That hasn't changed since Canadian ski legend Dave Marie dreamt of the concept. He came up with this uh, idea that we were going to set gates from the top of the mountain to the bottom. And we said, uh, you're crazy, you know? No one's ever done that here. And, uh, so anyway, we went about uh, fulfilling Dave's dream. 30 years later, his daughter crosses the finish line. For Olympian Julia Murray, it's an honor to ski in her father's race. It's uh, touching and very valuable to me to continue to be a part of it as much as it hurts. <laughs> Stripping down to race suits on a cold morning, pain is all part of the fun. Many, like Andre Janik, have competed in this event since the beginning, reliving her glory days and putting her race experience to the test. Stay smooth, breathe, and get to the bottom. <laughs> but not everyone has national team credentials. Others join friends to simply say they did it. The strategy was not to fall, <laughs> not to miss a gate because it quali disqualifies the whole team. So it's about the team. <laughs> From strategic old timers to young guns racing across the finish line, even snowboarders have gotten in on the action. With more than 300 racers on the 30th anniversary, organizers say they don't see this event losing momentum or its original focus. I think what this thing really embodies is the spirit of Dave Murray and, and what he believed in skiing, that skiing is a lifelong sport. He let him work on the weather, he gave us a beautiful uh, sunny day today. Bluebird sky and hard packed snow, the perfect conditions for race day, the perfect way to honour a skiing legend.
Well, congratulations to all the racers who participated in the event and a big thank you to the organizers. Now, music may be a way that some of these racers pump themselves up for this big race. And our next story, well, it may not pump you up, but it would certainly help you relax before you head down the slopes. Paul McClellan has this week's edition of Go Listen. The music that I make takes layers of violin that are all composed in, in real time. Um, a lot of people kind of describe it as being soundscapey or orchestral. Um, and then I, I write uh, lyrics on top. Oh, it's beautiful. Perched in the attic of an older Vancouver home, Hannah Epperson perfects her craft building each layer of her songs and looping those layers behind her for every performance, giving her a very big sound for a one-person act. Now you'll come out of an eight. You'll always come out of eight. Now with something like looping, what does it offer you as an artist? There's something that's really empowering about it. Um, I mean, at the same time, it's, it can be incredibly lonely. Um, one of the most magical you know, some of the most magical times I've had musically have been, in, you know, collaborating with other people, um, which I do get to do a lot of. It's a beautiful and kind of stark world. You recently released the video you called Where Do Songs Come From? Yeah. That, that question is a really, really interesting one for me. Where do, songs, uh, where do songs come from? I think probably most artists and musicians experience a lot of self-doubt, um, wondering where uh, where the inspiration comes from. A lot of, I've had the experience many times of having music kind of move through me. I feel like a vessel that's just, that, that music moves through. And, and sometimes it's really hard to, to know whether I'm actually responsible for having made it. It's really hard to take ownership of things that come from a place that you don't really understand. Shadowless and Brother are two tracks I did with a local producer who goes by the name Stint, AJ Bhattacharya. He's actually from Data Romance. Um, and we were gonna, we were actually originally gonna do an e whole EP together, a five track probably, um, but he got a bunch of work in LA. So he's gone for, for the time being. So I, I still wanted to release those two tracks in a physical form. So they're gonna be released on a seven inch split EP, which I'm really excited about. I love vinyl so much, and this will be the first time I get to distribute anything of my own on vinyl. The next most pressing recording opportunity I have is I'm going to be working with Kay McKenzie from We Are The City to compose an entire um, album's worth of music for Shane Koizan, who I've collaborated. He's a prolific, amazing spoken word artist. One day, I swear to God, <laughs> I will say no to, to doing, uh, doing so much recording for other people and, and do a Hannah, a full-length Hannah album. It's been a long time coming. But remember your sister's hand There was always a sister's hand Take the shock, shock to your head Hannah has also recently partnered with Madcaps, a group who helped bring attention to mental health issues in British Columbia. And you can check out her music at hannahepperson.ca. From an attic in East Van, I'm Paul McClellan, Hannah Epperson certainly has a beautiful voice. And if you'd like to view that story again, or maybe one of our full shows that you may have missed, all of our stories and shows are available online in HD. Just visit youtube.com slash Whistler Shaw. Go see the sky, we're your local voice. Coming up. I can make something that's really real that somebody is gonna be able to use every day. The Whistler Pottery Club wants you to help fill these empty bowls. 
The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Hairstyling and color services for Heather Butts are provided by The Loft Salon. TheLoftSalon.com Hi folks, Don Taylor here. Need a lift? At Levin Machinery, they sell, rent, lease, and service machinery, big and small, for your material handling needs. And they offer certified training. Stack it, reach it, lift it, love it. One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month, and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents, and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers, and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today. Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, on the peak of Whistler Mountain, where the 30th annual Peak to Valley race is taking place. But we're switching from athletes to artists for our next story. The Whistler Pottery Club is a group of very creative artists who gather once a week at a local high school. They work to create beautiful pieces while encouraging one another. But right now, they're working on a collaborative piece. They're working to create 100 bowls for their first annual Empty Bowls fundraiser. It's taking place on February 21st. Have a look. I just love that feeling that I'm in control and the more I do, the better I get at it. Trimming her work ever so gently, Clay begins to peel away. Sculpting the beautiful bowl, the piece of art becomes more defined. I can make something that's really real, that somebody is going to be able to use every day and be reminded of the time that we spent together. Marianne Collishaw hadn't worked with Clay since she was 14, but years later her move to Whistler connected her with the wheel once again. She discovered the Whistler Pottery Club, a group of local artists, beginners and professionals who meet once a week to help perfect their craft together. So, so I love that. And I got to meet a potter and, and find a whole community through pottery. And now as I look more at different pottery clubs, from around the world and I'm looking at their websites and I see it's in fact it's all about community. There we go. Oh. Like the opening of a kiln, joining her new community brought added colour to her life. Carefully removing pottery from the recently fired kiln, the support never stops. Admiring pieces and their magical colours, finished products often differ from when they went in, but it's what they look like when they come out that keeps the conversation going. It generates a lot of conversation for people who like to do it and they end up liking to learn new techniques and talk about the techniques they're using and that's often why they get together. Now their support is spreading beyond their small club and into the community. Many of these finished bowls will be used to raise money through an empty bowls fundraiser, benefiting those who need a helping hand. The bowls are sold as part of the ticket price, so people come in, they select the bowl that catches their eye and they have a dinner of soup and they then take the bowl home with them. When you fill your selected bowl with soup from one of the restaurants participating at the event, you'll be filling several other bowls in homes from Squamish to Pemberton, as 100% of the proceeds will help stock shelves at food banks in the Sea to Sky Corridor. I think as potters we often produce functional wares. That's often what motivates us is creating things that people will use and pick up and admire but also take into their homes and eat with and um, display things in. So uh, the empty bowls just really spoke to us. While the event will help bring the greater community together, it's also helping these artists find a new meaning to a process they already love. It's taking our club to a whole new level because we're working towards a common goal. Here we always are doing our own thing and this one is really all of us. The Empty Bowls fundraiser takes place on February 21st at the Squamish Lillooak Cultural Centre right here in Whistler. 
Tickets are just $30 each and don't forget you get to take home your beautiful bowl after you've enjoyed a delicious lunch provided by some of the many participating restaurants. Just visit WhistlerPotteryClub.com for more information. And our next story might help you fill that bowl with a nutritious meal. This week our health series looks at what's good for you at Galloway Foods. It's just a conversation about food all the time. A conversation that has evolved a lot over the long lifespan of Galloway's Foods. My dad bought it in 1974 from the previous owner, Mr. Galloway's, who owned it in 1936. Annie Maligiani took over the family business in 2003. Ten years later, she's taking the store back to its roots. 2013, year of change for you. Yes, big changes. It started with the gluten-free. In February, no gluten at all in the facility, and then we had no GMO, no preservatives, no chemicals, no additives, no food color. Amazing. No soy. So no baby. clean eating and in a nice, clean environment yes, as well. Yes, it's fantastic, and it feels great. The Burnaby location is a first of its kind in Western Canada, with a 100% gluten-free production facility and warehouse. In the front, you can mill your own flour. You can actually make flour out of lentils? Yes. Really? It's the best thing. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And what is the benefit of doing this then besides so control? So the whole grain contains the endosperm, the germ, and the bran. And when you're milling it here, you're actually keeping all the nutrients. And you can make it out of it pretty much anything then, is that right? Actually, you can use rice, you can use uh, millet. Quinoa. You can grind or flake your own flour concoction right in the store or buy a mill to take home with you. You can also make your own peanut butter. This really is old style peanut butter because it's just peanuts. It's just peanuts. No sugar, no oil, no salt, no preservatives. Nothing you can't pronounce. It could really taste a peanut too. I'm just going my mouth stuck together. <laughs> The new Galloway's also has a small organic farmer's market and fodder-filled food stations. We want to actually educate people. So like we'd have like a station saying, did you know, you know, coconuts are good for you. And uh, Did you uh, know everybody's crazy for coconuts? <laughs> yes, everybody's crazy for coconuts. <laughs> what would you do in a deserted island? <laughs> Eat coconut. <laughs> A home to superfoods run by a superwoman. Annie really does it all. She handpicks the ingredients, she runs the facility, she runs workshops, and she has her own line of Annie Oxidants. I, I want to make a change in the way the kids are eating. I want to be the healthy mom, like to my customers. You can visit GallowayFoods.com for more information and they do offer free cooking classes at their Burnaby location, something you might want to look into next time you're in the city. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Go Sea to Sky. We'd love to hear from you. Visit us at Facebook.com slash Go Sea to Sky. Later in the show... We took a little bit of a fun twist on a butternut squash soup. So we've actually taken some Thai influences and crossed them over. We put a Thai twist on a traditional butternut squash soup. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Heather Butt's wardrobe is fitted by Peak Performance. Peakperformance.com Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV takes you from around the world to across the country to your own backyard. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV gives you the inside information on the outside world daily on Shaw TV. Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, hanging out on top of beautiful Whistler Mountain. This is the 30th annual Peak to Valley Race. Now skiers head from here 
through a course that's five kilometers long, reaching the valley bottom. It has more than 180 gates. Yikes! Now, some people find an event like this terrifying, while others find an event like cleaning out their closet even more terrifying. This week on West Coast Style, we look at a closet cull. Our closets can get away from us, and especially for someone who can justify every single purchase. And we're not talking about me today, we're talking about Kelsey. She's a reporter and a writer, and she's been featured in fashion blogs. But Kelsey, this is crazy. This is an entire room devoted to your closet. I'm a fashion reporter. Kelsey, meet Anna. Hi. Kelsey, it's so nice to meet you. Let's yeah. get to work. help people detox their closets. This closet is overstuffed with items, so we need to pare it down, choose the pieces that work, and get rid of everything that doesn't. I just love clothes, and they're an extension of me, and every time I buy a new piece or get given a new piece, it has meaning to me. Once something has like a backstory, it's really hard for me to part with. I'm kind of doing this for myself and for my husband. It's our one year anniversary coming up and it would be a really great surprise to show him that I can make space for him in our house. She loves Angelina Jolie. She likes the simplicity, the cleanliness, the European style of minimalism. This is kind of the opposite of what the closet has going on. So what I want to do with Kelsey is get her into some sleek, sexy, yet classy pieces that really showcase her as the star. And Kelsey, how about this novelty sweater? And now comes the hard part, the sorting and saying goodbye to some precious pieces. We've got consignment, donate, and recycling. Let's get started. The number one barrier I come across is emotional attachment. How about this sheer slash plaid uh, Kurt Cobain number? I'm still kind of attached to it. People hang on to things that don't fit. They hang on to things that look awful. They hang on to things that are outdated because somebody gave it to them or they have a memory attached to that. It doesn't work for a functional current closet. This is everything we're gonna keep. That's right, Kelsey, these are your favorites, and now I'm gonna do some shopping and get you those basics. And with the help of Anna's additional pieces, Kelsey can finally find something to wear. Look out, Angelina. I feel so much lighter. Anna was the perfect counselor. She helped me when I got a little bit teary, and in the end, everything that should have gone Kelsey feels relaxed, she looks beautiful, she's got a clean, zen space, mission accomplished. Well, almost accomplished, there's still the matter of her husband. Happy anniversary! Wow, this looks so zen. You look great. I'm Erin Shaw for West Coast Style. <laughs> The damage to Kelsey's closet cull was 18 bags and three boxes, all donated to local charities. And speaking of such, there's a unique event happening right here in Whistler that will benefit all three area food banks. And it's a tasty event too. For just $30, you get to attend the Empty Bowls fundraiser on February 21st at the Squamish Lillawak Cultural Center. You get to choose a beautiful handcrafted bowl made by Whistler Pottery Club and enjoy a delicious delicious soup lunch provided by one of the many participating restaurants and the Four Seasons Resort is one of them and this week on our episode of DIY we're giving away a secret to one of their spectacular Thai soups. We are talking hearty and healthy and it can be served any time of the year. We're talking soup today with Chef Tori Martindale yep. inside Cut at the Four Seasons Resort. Tori, we're making soup and you're a soup champion. We are actually, we've won it the last two years in a row. And that is the Whistler? Uh, that's the Harvest Soup Challenge at the Farmer's Market. The Harvest Soup Challenge. Okay, so what is the soup that you're making for us today? All right, well we took a little bit of a fun twist on a butternut squash soup. So we've actually taken some Thai influences uh, and cross them over into the, into the butternut squash soup. We've got some really fun ingredients like copper lime, uh, red Thai curry, uh, some fish sauce and lime juice, and coconut milk. It really brightens it all up. So it really takes that homey, hearty, traditional soup and adds a little flavor. And gives it a little bit of funky flavor, absolutely. All right, so how do we make it? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some ginger and garlic and shallots. 
Uh, we're gonna saute those out with um, some kaffir lime. The kaffir lime is very traditional for Thai flavors and some red curry paste. The red curry paste is really sharp lemongrass and chili. We're gonna add some chopped cilantro stems in there. And you're just sauteing all this. We're gonna saute it all out really well. And actually we're gonna use the shells from the shrimp because uh, a lot of the flavor actually comes from the shells. Uh, and we're gonna cook those out in the soup and at the end we blend the whole soup up and we pass it through a fine strainer uh, and it retains all that beautiful flavor. So once we've got all of these ingredients, uh, you're sauteing it right now, this is great. Uh, and then you're adding, we add the butternut squash, is that it? Yeah, absolutely. And then we take the fish sauce and the uh, lime juice, and it's an acid, so it pulls everything off the bottom of the pan. You add a little bit of your Fitzsimmons stock, and you let your soup simmer out, and then you give it a good blend at the end. Okay, and what about the, uh, the coconut milk The here? coconut milk goes in uh, just as you begin to go to simmer, and it cooks through, and actually coconut milk makes it a little more healthy, so you don't use a heavy cream, so it gives a nice rounded uh, smoothness to the soup. So how long did we saute this for? Uh, we saute, it takes probably about 10, 15 minutes to saute out the ingredients. And then once you deglaze and you add in all your liquids, uh, you go for about 45 minutes. So once you've added, you know, your major liquids, the water, the coconut milk, you simmer that on the stove for Good 45 minutes. minutes until all the vegetables are very soft. Um, and then you blend it in a regular bar blender. Uh, and pass it through a fine strainer. So a fine strainer that gets rid of all the, the tails, the shells. Exactly. So you want to pull all the flavor out of the shrimp shells and then strain it out at the very end. You make it sound pretty easy. It's pretty easy and it's extremely flavorful and it's easy to do at home. Okay, and yeah. this is our finished product here. Absolutely. We got some beautiful, rich, wow. colored soup. We did some tempura shrimp uh, just to kind of go along with the theme and some cilantro. And then it's just simple to serve. So you're pouring that soup over top of your uh, your tempura, tempura shrimp. Tempura shrimp, absolutely. Look at this. That's gorgeous. And if you want to put a little more a little more garnish on there, you can take a couple of cilantro leaves and just sprinkle it on the top. And actually, I've got some green onion that I've soaked in some ice water as well. Just add it. Beautiful and easy. And easy. Thank you. You're very welcome. Rumor has it that's the soup that the Four Seasons Resort will be serving at the Empty Bowls fundraiser. So why not attend the event, get a taste, and then make it yourself? Well, that does it for this episode of Go See to Sky from the top of Whistler Mountain. Thanks for watching. Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. 
you can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice.